about ready. We're going to try to get started tonight and welcome the Sabbath. Everybody gathering on in tonight. Let me, I warmed up the shofar. I had it warm, about warm enough. sing our a couple of choruses tonight. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, and then we'll sing Coming to His Presence. tonight, Psalm 100. If you have your Bible, read along with us. Well, I'll read the first verse, we all read the second, so on and so forth till we get to the end, read responsibly. Not many verses, but it is a familiar passage of Scripture, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord Yahweh is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. The reading of God's word will take it apply to our heart and to our life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Let's do ask the uh, Lord's blessing on the meeting tonight. We do have a, quite a few folks that are out. We're getting ready for the big ice storm. For those that are, that are watching uh, by way of internet, we're getting ready for, for uh, uh, the, what they call it, the st winter storm Jupiter. And uh, so everybody's starting to get hunkered down and get ready for three days of R&R, uh, &R, rest and relaxation. I told Miss Sharon tonight, Brother Danny, that uh, 
if we're going to be stuck in the house for three days, we need some cookies and we need some chips and we need some cakes because I, we need the essential stuff. That's exactly right. We need that stuff that, that's important. And uh, so so I, I thought that we had really missed out on that because we went grocery shopping the other day and we didn't get any of that stuff. And she said there's three cake mixes and brownie mixes in the in the cabinet and we can make no bake cookies and we can eat. So we got the essentials, Brother Roger. We're all taken care of, man. So, you, know, um, you might need no bake if you got an electric oven. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Well, I do have a gas. I, have, I do have a gas stove in the uh, in the camper. I can go out into the camper. I just won't have no heat, so uh, I can turn on the gas stove, but I just won't have any heat. Now, let's do pray for Lucas and Brandy and their family. They're they're all sick tonight, so let's do keep them in prayer. And then though we're missing some other families tonight, so let's do pray for them. Uh, Shabbat Shalom and Happy Sabbath to all of you. We hope that uh, the Lord greatly blesses you as we take this time to. Uh, set aside for our Heavenly Father, for our Lord, and, and to honor His Word and to give Him praise and give Him glory uh, and to set aside this time for Him. Uh, let's do also continue to pray for our country. Uh, we are still uh, uh, just a, a week or so away uh, from the inauguration and a lot of things could happen. I don't know if you paid attention to what's been going on. Uh, American troops that have massed uh, in Poland uh, on the border by Russia. Uh, and uh, there's some different things that are happening within our world. Uh, and that's why it's always good to be prepared. Amen. Right. Always good to make sure that your heart is right with Yahweh, with uh, Yeshua. And make sure that uh, you are saved by the grace of God. Uh, that you have put your faith and trust in the Lord, uh, Yeshua Messiah. Uh, that you will put your, put your trust in Him. Salvation is by faith, not by works. Right. We, we don't work be, uh, for salvation. We work because we are saved. We are saved by our faith in the Lord Jesus, uh, the Lord Yeshua Messiah. But we work and we obey him because we love him. Amen. And so that's, uh, that's the truth of the gospel in a nutshell. Someone have a request you'd like to mention tonight with uplifted hand? Anyone at all? Yes, yes brother. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So they're able to get their handicapped van for Nathaniel. And, uh, you know, never seen the righteous forsaken nor God's seed begging bread. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Those are verses that, that we can take to the bank. Amen. And so we praise the Lord for that. We thank God for his blessings uh, upon us. Anyone else uh, have a request of prayer? Yes, sir, Brother Mark. Did you remember my mom? Uh, blood pressure today was down to 104 over 40. Okay. And they're going to lower her blood pressure medicine. Miss Doris is with her tonight. Miss Doris is with her tonight. Keep uh, keep her in prayer. Also, pray for Miss Elsie. Miss Elsie is she's still recovering, but she didn't want to get out in the cold, and and it's just hard for her to move around. And so, uh, pray for those that are are shut in, uh, and those that are not able to get to the to the house of the Lord for. For worship, uh, keep them in prayer. Uh, anyone else? Uh, prayer request? All right. Uh, uh, unspoken request, double lift the hand. The Lord knows every need. Those of you that will and can, let's gather around this, uh, this uh, evening and let's worship the Lord in prayer. And let's find ourselves bowed down to him so that we may pray tonight. Let's pray tonight. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your love and for your kindness. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather together, Lord, to worship you, Lord, to praise your name, to give you the honor that's due you. We thank you for the great week of work that you've given us, and Lord, how you've provided for us and allowed us to labor. Now is the time for us to rest according, according to your appointed times. Lord, I know there are those that do not respect the Sabbath. There are those that do not believe that it's necessary. Lord, we pray for them. We pray for their eyes to be opened. Lord, we pray for the scales to be removed. 
Lord, we ask you that you would honor our efforts. And Lord, that you would bless for, for uh, obedience tonight. Lord, as we begin our Sabbath with worship and praise. As we begin our Sabbath of giving honor to the name Most High. We thank you for your Son, Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus Christ. We thank you for salvation given so rich and free by faith through grace. We ask you that you would speak to our hearts tonight, that you would tender us, Lord, that you would convict us of our sin, that you'd bring us to a place of repentance, Lord, that you'd help us, Lord, to keep our eyes focused upon you, that you'd bless the preaching and the singing may it be done to glorify and to honor you. We pray for these requests tonight. We do thank you for meeting the need for Daniel and Alicia's van. We thank you, Lord, for providing, for taking care of the sale of the other vehicle. Lord, we just pray that you'll just continue to bless that family and help them during this difficult time. We do pray for Miss Elsie at home tonight, for Miss Gertrude. We ask you to touch both of these ladies. We do pray for other families that are not here tonight, that you touch them, those that are sick, those that are struggling, those that are not able to be here. Lord, we do pray for this storm that's, uh, that's uh, supposed to come upon us tonight and for the whole weekend. We ask you that you would keep folks safe. We ask you, Lord, that you would uh, help us to be wise. Lord, help us to have some wisdom and some smarts about us. Lord, that we not go out and, and try to drive in the bad weather. But Lord, you keep those safe that have to labor and those that have to work. The power company and the fire department, police department, the hospitals, those that have to, uh, have to be on call. We ask you that you watch over them. Lord, thank you for those that take care of us behind the scenes. Lord, we pray for our country. We pray, Lord, for the next six to seven days before the inauguration. We ask you that you would, uh, Lord, uh, forgive us of our sin. America, Lord, has sinned against you. Lord, America, Lord, has, has violated your law. America has, has spit in the face of your son. Lord, America has turned its back upon your commandments. Lord, America, Lord, uh, needs a great revival. Lord, we don't need another meeting. We need a, a move of the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, we ask you in the name of Yeshua Messiah that you would touch this country one more time. Lord, that you would forgive us of our national sin. Lord, I pray you'll forgive us, Lord, of, of violating your law and violating your commandments. Lord, I pray you'll forgive us, Lord, for taking your word and stomping on it. Lord, forgive us, Lord, for turning our back, Lord, upon the grace that you've given us. We ask you in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord, that you forgive this nation and, Lord, draw us back in a place of repentance. Lord, we ask you, God, send revival to this country. Send revival to this nation. We need a touch from God today. Now, Lord, meet with us tonight in this Sabbath meeting. Lord, may you be honored and glorified by all that's said and done. Lord, may you bless us for our efforts. Lord, forgive us of our failure. But Lord, most of all, may you be honored. May Yeshua be lifted up. May we see the lovely Lord. Lord, we ask you that you be honored and glorified by all that's said and done. Now move in our midst, I pray. For it is in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray these things. And all God's people said... Amen. As you return back to your seat, shake hands, fellowship one with another. Remain standing as we sing the family of God. Are
In your hymn book tonight, page number one, remain standing as we go to the song service, page number one. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall.
number 14. Number 14, great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. Elohim, God in the Bible, is it's Elohim, capital E, Elohim. Lord, uh, capital Lord is Yahweh or Jehovah. And that he is our Heavenly Father. He's our Creator and our Heavenly Father. If we are saved and born again, not just because we're created, but because we have put our faith and trust in his Son, Yeshua Messiah. I'm afraid that many believers, Christians, professing Christians, if they're truly born again, a lot of them really don't know who they are. I've uh, been talking with some folks online and trying to be a blessing and trying to help them to see. But I've come to the realization that uh, if the Lord can't get them to see, there's nothing that I can do to get them to see. So we pray the Lord to take their scales off their eyes and, and soften their heart and tender their heart. But as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ and a believer, we become heirs of Abraham. We 
become heirs to the promises of Abraham. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, that, 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 that we are heirs to the promises through, through our faith in Christ. What are the promises? The promises are eternal life. The promises are, are, are uh, 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 a position. Uh, it's a place in a family. It's, uh, it's land. Uh, it's uh, uh, to rule and reign with the Lord during the millennium and to, to be in, in his presence for time and for eternity when he chooses. And this song, if I can remember the words to it, is, is called Royal Descendant. What, what key would you need? That'd be A flat. No, no, that'd be cool. I'm a royal descendant.
take your Bibles and go to Deuteronomy 11. Make sure I'm on tonight there, Brother Denny. Deuteronomy chapter number 11. I want us to stand in honor of the word of Yahweh. I'm going to read tonight just a, a few verses. Uh, we trying to continue through our preaching through the Bible. For those of you that are joining us by internet, we started this journey July of 2013 with the book of Genesis, and we are just in Deuteronomy. I've heard preachers say, well, I don't have anything to preach. Well, I've been doing this for three years. Brother Ray, we ain't even got out of the first five books yet. I think I've got a, a lifetime of messages that I, I, I think I can preach. I think it'll be all right. Uh, Deuteronomy 11 and verse number, I want to read verse number 8 uh, and 9, and then we're going to jump down to verse number 18. Verse 8 says, Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whither you go to possess it, and that you may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed a land that floweth with milk and honey. Verse 18. Therefore shall you lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes, and ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up, and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Father, bless the reading of your word. Help us tonight, Lord, as we preach. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, speak to our hearts. Lord, engage our minds. Help us, Lord, to think concerning the word of God. Lord, help us, Lord, not to be steeped in tradition, and Lord, to accept the status quo, but Lord, help us to be students of thy word. Lord, I pray you'll fill us with your power, for it is in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray these things. Amen. You may be seated. When we look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, we see that it is a recap, again, of Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want you to Hold your finger there in Deuteronomy chapter 11, and I want you to run back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and, and we see what is known as the Shema, S-H-E-M-A, which is hear, O Israel, or hear and obey. It's known as the Shema in verse number 4 through 9. And here we see that the Lord is giving Moses the Shema, if you will. He's giving him commandment uh, concerning his people. Now, I don't know about you, and I don't know about folks that are listening or watching by, by way of internet, but I want you to understand that God established one people for his purpose. Right. One people. He didn't establish 15 different groups and this, and this crowd and, and, and Israel for here and the church for here. No, the Bible's very clear that there is one body, and that is the body of Christ, and it was established by Jehovah in the very beginning and here he's establishing his people he's establishing his pattern he's establishing his worship and the things that he wants his people to do let's read here in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4 hear O Israel the Lord our God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the popes of thy house and on thy gates. Uh, and then he continues on. And so here we see in Deuteronomy chapter 11, it is a basically a reminder of the Lord's commandments. Now let me just let me just sort of challenge your intellect and challenge your logic here tonight. Uh, Any time that we see the Lord repeat something over and over 
and over and over again, Brother Mark, I would say that that's a very important thing and it's something that we really should consider the fact that the Lord Yahweh is trying to get our attention and trying to get us to understand this is what I want. Many times we take scripture and we'll take one verse of scripture or we'll take a little passage of scripture and we'll make a doctrine out of it. Uh, even though it's never repeated and even though it's never reminded us again. But yet here the Lord is reminding his people over and over and over and over what his desire is for them. Now if you'll notice that he gives us four things in these verses. Of course back up in verse number 8. Of Deuteronomy 11, he says, Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day. Let me just say this too also. There's over 2,000 laws in our country that we are expected to adhere to. There's only 613 uh, in all of, uh, all of the Lord's law and all the Lord's commandments. By the way, that's what the Torah means. It means instructions. The law of God is the Torah or the instructions of God, otherwise known as the doctrine of God. There's only 613 in there, and all of them do not apply to you. They don't all apply to you. Say, for example, the laws of the priesthood, or the laws of the judges, or the magistrates, or the laws of women do not apply to me. Yet, the, there's only 613, but yet people tend to get really upset when you start talking about keeping the Lord's commandments. That was Israel's problem. Israel's problem was that they had the tablets, they had the stone. They had the handwriting of God. They, they had it written down, but the Lord wanted it written somewhere else. He wanted it written in their minds and in their hearts. He wanted it to be in them, not just for them to carry, but for them to meditate upon, for them to consider. I want you to look over quickly. To That's embarrassing. That's really, I did not turn my ringer down, and here I am trying to record live, and my phone is ringing. Wow. I violated my own my own policy, brother, brother Roger. <laughs> so that means we can all have our No, do not turn your finger on. No. No. <laughs> Psalm chapter one. Look at what the Bible says. Psalm chapter one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law or the Torah or the teaching or the instructions or the doctrines of Yahweh. And in his Torah or his law does he meditate day and night. Now, how can you meditate on something if it's not in your heart? It's just written on, on paper. Kind of hard to meditate on those kind, kind of, kinds of things unless you're carrying it around with you. Unless you're toting around the tablets of stone or unless you're carrying It's hard to meditate on those things. But the psalmist goes on to, re, uh, to, uh, to write. And he says that he shall be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. What is the prerequisite? That he delights in the Torah or the law of the Lord, and in his Torah he does meditate day and night. And then you see the blessing for following the Torah and the blessing for following the law. Look what it says. Verse 4, the ungodly are not so. The Bible calls the ungodly the lawless, the ones that do not follow the law, the ones that do not follow the Torah or the teachings of God. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the, God, of the ungodly shall perish. Now, if we look back to Deuteronomy chapter 11, the Lord gives instruction here in verse number 18 about laying up these commandments. And notice what he says. I'm going to give you four things tonight. Not going to keep you long. But I'm going to give you four things tonight concerning these things of laying up these commandments or these words. Notice what he says in Deuteronomy 11, 18. Therefore, shall you lay up these my words, first of all, in your heart and in your soul. The Lord wants his word to permeate our heart. Now, when anything is in our heart, I know a lot of people say, well, well it's just not in my heart to do that. Well, uh, that's a very true statement because many times uh, people do what people want to do. People go where people want to go. It, it's amazing how people will very, very easily find. Uh, uh, of course, we got this, the uh, playoffs uh, in uh, Kansas City this week uh, with the Chiefs, and 
I don't even know who they're playing. I don't, I don't keep up with football. Who are they playing? I have Steelers. no They're playing the Steelers, Pit, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, and uh, there'll be people uh, that will not have the money to pay their light bill, but bless God, they'll have money to buy a ticket to get to that football game. Amen. Sure, people. $115 a piece. How much? $115. $115 a piece. Uh, you know what I can do, Brother Roger, with $115? I can do a lot with $115 in my house, amen? But nevertheless, people do what people want to do. Uh, people spend what people want to spend. They buy what they want to buy. They go where they want to go. They associate with who they want to associate with. And they participate with what they want to participate with. That's why people, they can always find a reason why not to be in the house of the Lord, but they can always go somewhere else because it's more convenient or it's more, more personable or it's more more enjoyable. The Bible here is very clear that Yahweh wants his word in our heart because if the word of God is in our heart, then it will change us. If the word of God is in our heart, it will motivate us. If the word of God is in our heart, it will cause us to want to, to, to live after him. If the word of God is in our heart, it will cause us to have a desire to please him. If the word of God is in our heart, it will change our lifestyle. It will change our direction because we will want to follow his word. We will want to obey his commandments. We will want to adhere to his law. Not, not so we can be saved, but because we are saved. Amen. Amen. Right. I've said this many times that uh, when it comes to a husband and wife relationship, that uh, a, a wife will just about, a good wife, will just about do anything for her husband Amen. if he will show her that he loves her. Amen. <laughs> Got a good, good amen out of, out of Brother Roger. What does the Lord promise us? What does the Lord promise us if we will obey him? He promises us blessings. He promises us blessings. Now, now I want you to look in uh, in chapter number twelve. I'm sort of getting I'm sort of getting a, a head out. Actually, it's not the chapter number twelve. It's a, it, yeah, it's a little bit farther on in chapter number eleven. Uh, it's toward the end, but it's verse number 26, 27, 28. The Lord wants us to have the Word of God in our heart so that it will motivate us, so that it will drive us, and so that it will cause us to have a desire to follow Him. People say, well, I can't follow the law, and I can't follow the commandments, and I can't do all those things because it's too hard. No, you don't want to. You don't want to. If you wanted to do something, you'd make a way and you'd find a way to do it. That's why people are struggling and having a hard time with Sabbath. I had a guy tell me the other day on uh, uh, on uh, on Facebook that nobody, nobody is 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 worshiping on Sabbath in America. You know how many thousands of people right now are either worshiping tonight or tomorrow in honor of the Word of God and the honor of Yahweh. Thousands, thousands and thousands and thousands of people are coming into the realization that God's word is true from Genesis to Revelation, right. as the old timers say, from kiver to kiver. Amen. Right. But if you look down in Deuteronomy 11, verse 26, it said, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. How many of you want to get a blessing? Amen. How many of you want your prayers answered? Uh, 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 what's, what's the word I want to use? Uh, you, you want to have them answered to, to the good part, uh, positively, amen? Want them, want them good answers. You know, a, a no is an answer, and wait is an answer, and yes is an answer, and you want them positive answers. You want to receive the blessings of the Lord. You want your cupboards to be full. You want to you you want to, your bills to be paid. You want to you want to have all the physical blessings and the spiritual blessings. You want your children to grow up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You want your family to be protected. You want your family to be secure. You want to receive the blessings of the Lord. Hey, how do we do that? Look at what he says. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord, which I command you this day, verse 28, and a curse. If you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day and go after other gods which you have not known. Have you noticed how in turmoil religion is in America and churches are in America? And how Christians, professing Christians, can live a lifestyle of sin? 
Professing Christians can live unholy and ungodly and wicked. Uh, did you see, and, and I, I mentioned this Wednesday night, did you see the two lesbians that have been uh, uh, put in as pastors, co-pastors of the large uh, Baptist church in Washington, D.C., 155-year-old Baptist church in Washington, D.C.? Two lesbians have been put in as co-pastors because the pastoral committee said they were the best candidates that they had. Boy, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Amen, amen. They're the best. We wonder why America's in turmoil. And we wonder why we've, we, we've accepted homosexual marriage and ungodly lifestyles. And we've accepted all of these things taking place. And, and, and we've accepted all of the violence and, and, and all of the turmoil. Why? It's because we're under a curse. We're under a curse. America is under a curse. And no one can tell me otherwise. America is under a curse and this world is under a curse. You cannot live in sin and thumb your nose at God's law and, God, and God's commandments and expect a holy God to bless you. You can't do that. He says plainly, a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which you have not known. First of all, the Lord wants us to, our hearts to be filled with his word. Look over in Joshua chapter number 22. Joshua chapter 22 and verse number 5. Now, now we believe in, in looking in the word of God. I believe in testing everything. I'd like for all of you to become Bereans, amen, and test everything. Joshua, what? Joshua 22 verse number 5. Joshua 22 verse 5 said, but take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law. Hey, this is a repeat. Remember what I said that if the Lord really wants to get our attention, he repeats it over and over and over and over again. How many times do we have to tell our children to do something over and over and over again? Yeah. Why? Because number one, they don't listen. Number two, they're disobedient. And number three, they just love to hear us talk, right? Amen. He says, take diligent heed to do the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God. Jesus said that in the Gospels. To love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways. Jesus said, I am the way. You follow this? Or are, you, are you seeing this? And keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. The Lord wants the, us, our hearts, to be filled with the word of God. In 1 Samuel chapter number 12. 1 Samuel, continue moving, moving forward in your, in your Bible. 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 24. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 12 and verse number 24, Only fear the Lord and serve Him in truth with all your heart. All your heart. He wants us to have our hearts filled with the Word of God. How do we do that? We can't do that by just haphazardly accepting it. We can't do that by just listening to some, some preacher stand up in the pulpit, a Dr. Bottle Stuffer, and, and, and try to tell you his philosophies on the, on the doctrines of the Word of God. But we've got to put these things in our heart and put these things in our mind. And as the psalmist said, we've got to meditate on them day and night. He wants them in our heart. Because if they're in our heart, they will motivate us to live for him. In the book of 1 Kings, chapter number 8, one more for this point. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse number 61. The Bible says, Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord your God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Another repeat. We're still repeating the same old phraseology. Well, we're out of the Torah. Now we're in the Tanakh. We're into the prophets. We're now into the history portion of the word of God. And we're still hearing the same thing. To, to love the Lord and to serve him and to keep his commandments and walk in his ways with all of our heart. If the word of God is going to be in our heart and the desire to serve God is going to be in our heart, then these things are not going to be difficult. What is it John said? I believe it's in 1 John chapter number 3. Let me look there. Uh, uh, you, you can turn there if you like, but I believe it's in 1 John chapter number, chapter number 3. Um, no, it's, it's, it's chapter number 5, I'm sorry. 1 John chapter number 5. Remember what the Lord said about take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke upon you for my 
burden is easy and my, or, or, or my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Remember the Jews and the Pharisees and the laws of the Talmud and the laws of the Kabbalah and all the oral laws and all the oral ordinances that they had 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 become such a burden they couldn't carry them. They couldn't meet up to their standards. They thought uh, as far as the Jews and as far as the Pharisees taught, there was no way that they could ever attain favor with God because there was no way they could keep all the law. And there is no way that they could keep all the oral law. But Jesus said that my yoke is easy and my burden's light. Look at what John said in 1 John chapter 5. He said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, we're in verse number 1, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Right. They're not grievous. They're not burdensome. They're not burdensome. It's not hard for us to live for God. Well, I may have to give up something. Yeah, for your own good and for your own benefit. Yeah. Because it's good for you and because it's safe for you and because it's healthy for you. Because if you obey the Lord, then you receive a blessing. But if you disobey, then you receive a curse and you miss out on blessings. Look back over to Deuteronomy 11. We'll see in the second part. He says, lay up the words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Not only should we let our hearts be filled with the Word of God, but second of all, we need to let our eyes be fixed on the Word of God. What happens when you're riding down the road and you take your eyes off the road and you get distracted? You get in a wreck. You, you, right? you run off the road. What happens if you're texting, which you shouldn't be texting, or if you're reading email, or if you're checking Facebook while you're riding down the road? You get a ticket for that. Nevertheless, but what happens if you get distracted? Your eyes get off the road and you put yourself in danger. It's the same way with the Word of God. It's the same way with the Word of God. When we take our eyes off the Lord, we take our eyes off the Word of God and we put them on something else. We put them on denominationalism. We put them on our, our pastor or we put them on our preacher. Uh, we put them on our church and our church body or put them on our building. We put our eyes uh, upon our doctrine. Uh, we put our eyes upon our associations and our fellowships. We put our eyes upon all the different things that we do in our society. And we take our eyes off of God's word and off of God's commandments. And, and we say in our heart, well, I don't have to do that because God loves me anyway. The Bible says that he wants us to keep our eyes fixed upon him and upon his word. Amen. Because when we take our eyes off of it, we tend to, we tend to get ourselves in trouble. What happened to Peter? Peter's in the boat. Uh, uh, the disciples are rowing across the water. A storm comes up, and here comes Yeshua walking on the water. And Peter said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come out there. And Peter walked on the water. Everybody gives Peter a hard time, but Lord of God, Peter walked on the water. Amen? He did. Yeah. Until he did what? Took, took his eyes off of the Lord, right. and he began to sink. Deuteronomy 11 is just very practical information and practical knowledge for us to have. The Lord wants us to keep our eyes fixed on his word. How do we meditate on the word of God as the psalmist said? We delight in the law of God and we meditate on it day and night. We fix our eyes upon it and we meditate on it in our heart. In Proverbs chapter 7 and verse number 2. Proverbs chapter number 7 and verse number 2. The Bible says... Keep my commandments and live in my law as the apple of thine eye. Somebody define what it means to be the apple of one's eye. What is the apple of one's eye? Love. Something you cherish. Something you cherish. Your grandchildren are the apple of your eye. Got to go up to Colby to see my grandchildren today and go up for Anna's uh, birthday and JoJo's birthday and Christopher and Bethany's anniversary. I don't know what it is about my children, but they had all their birthdays and anniversaries in January and February. Me and Becker are the only weirdos, and Miss Sharon are the only weirdos. We're September and October. Hey. <laughs> when you have something that's an apple of your eye, it's something that is that is a delight, something that you that you desire, something that is special. Something that, that is, is, it, it has value to you. I sound like Brother Shock, don't I? Value. 
Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> See, he don't have internet, and so he can't watch this. Glory to God. But he's going to be here next next month. Amen. And so I'm trying to get my, my brother shock uh, uh, in, uh, in impersonation down. <laughs> Value. I'm close, amen. Yeah. I'm close. Yeah. The Lord wants us to keep our eyes upon him. He says there in verse number 11, he said, well, to bind them for a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Now, I cannot cross my eyes. I can't do it. I, 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 I've, got a, I've got a handicap. Maybe I can get a car tag. I don't know. Um, I, I can't cross my eyes, you know. So Anna was with us last week, and, and, and she couldn't cross her eyes. And so I took my finger, and I put it right on her, right there on her. And I, and I said, look at my finger. And her eyes went, Broop. And, I, and now she just crossed her eyes, just, just boom, like that. I can teach others to cross their eyes, but I can't cross my eyes. But that's what it is, frontlet between your eyes. You see it there all the time. There was a movie years ago. I won't, uh, I won't quote the movie because it was not a good, good movie. But it, it came out back in the 70s, and uh, late 70s. And, and in the movie, uh, uh, a certain man uh, uh, put a, a thing on a pair of glasses uh, 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 that was the grabber. I think it was called, called the grabber. And, and uh, uh, the, the actor's name was Steve Martin. And, and, and he put the, the thing on the glasses so, so, so they, could, uh, they could take the glasses off and put it back on. And, and in the movie, people got cross-eyed because they were looking at this thing all the time. But when we have the Word of God in front of us, it keeps us fixed. It keeps us fixed and on goal and on target. The Bible is very clear. The Lord wants us to let our eyes remain fixed on the Word of God. Let's, let's look at number three. Look there in verse number 19. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Now, here I believe is the downfall of America. The downfall of America is our homes and our children. The downfall of America is the training and the teaching that we uh, are giving to our children. The downfall of America, I saw a post on, uh, on Facebook uh, on the preacher's page the other day. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the brothers has uh, got some children in his youth ministry. And there's six of them. They're unruly. Uh, and he wanted to know how to handle them and how to deal with them. And, and that's always an interesting thing and that's always a problem. Because many churches try to have children's ministries. They try to bring young people in. They try to get them on buses. And they try to get them into the church house. I don't have a problem with that. But you can't build a ministry on children. You can't do that. It costs money. okay? And unless you've got the resources, you can't do a good job with it. And so they're bringing young, young, young people in from homes that are broken from homes that are full of drug heads and dope heads and, and alcoholics and drunks and, and, uh, and uh, uh, homosexuality and lesbianism and, and uh, uh, adultery and fornication and all manner of wickedness going on inside these houses. And they bring them into the church house and they give them a 30-minute lesson uh, and talk about how, how wonderful Jesus is and how, how, how good it is to go to heaven. Uh, and then they go back into that hell that they're living in and we're wondering why our families are falling to pieces and why our churches are not making an impact. Uh, it's because God's people are not teaching their children the word of God from the very beginning. That's, right. That's the yeah. problem. That's the problem. We're not raising our children up in church. We're not raising up our children under the preaching of the Word of God. We shuffle them off to Sunday school. We shuffle them off to junior church. And they get a little 30-minute lesson, 45-minute lesson. They color a picture of Noah's Ark. And they walk out the door and never heard preaching. They've never heard, heard the convicting power of, of old-time preaching, of fireball preaching. That's because they don't know how to handle it. And when they get out of the junior church, they come into the church house and they don't know how to sit. They don't know how to listen. They don't know how to pay attention. And then by the time they graduate from high, high school, over 80% are out of the church and never come back. Why? Because moms and dads have not taken their responsibility to teach their children God's word. That's the problem. It's not the church's responsibility to raise your children. It's not the preacher's responsibility to raise your children. Moms and dads, you had the responsibility to raise your children. You had them. Bless God. Take responsibility and train them up. Amen. Right. It's just that Preach simple. Yeah. The Bible's very clear. You shall teach them your children. Well, my children can't learn. i got a three-year-old sitting back there that can quote Bible verses. I can guarantee you they can learn. All of them, them, them children back there on the back, Brother Rogers 
kids, Brother Danny's kids, uh, and Brother Derek Roberts' kids, they can all quote, quote verses, they can all sing Bible songs. You know why? Because they're being taught at a very early age. My three-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old, getting ready to be three-year-old granddaughter can quote Bible verses. Why? Because they're being taught the Word of God. And if we do not get our eyes back on the Lord and start using our mouth to proclaim the Word of God in our homes, we're not only going to lose our homes, we're going to lose our churches, we're going to lose our country. The third point is that we need to let our mouths be used to proclaim the Word of God. I, I remember, and I was guilty, just as guilty as the rest of them. We come up in a preacher's home. I've been, this is our 25th anniversary coming up this month when we left North Carolina to come out to start churches in Kansas. And 25 years is a long time. And um, it's, been a, it's been a different road. It's been an interesting road. But there was not always times, Brother Ray, that we spoke about the things of the Lord in the, you know, at home. We got caught up in the world, caught up in the things of the world. We got caught up in the Disney movies. We got caught up in the... Uh, we, we weren't big in the video games. I, I hate video games. I really, really do. I hate Xbox and, and, and all that kind of junk that's going on right now. Most... Uh, 25 and 30 year old men about uh, more than half of them are still uh, addicted to video games and they can't uh, uh, take care of their wives and uh, take care of their homes because they've got their nose stuck in a computer screen too much we wasn't big in the video games but we were you know we did uh, have your normal things so we didn't listen to rock music didn't listen to country music we listened to gospel music and, and hymns and things like that but we didn't always talk about the word of God brother, brother Mark we talked about different things you know, talk about the new Star Wars movie coming out. Talk about the new Disney movie coming out. Talk about this. Talk about that. And so many times I look back on my life and I see where I have failed in my, my ministry to my children. And I see in many cases how it's reflected upon them in their lives. The Bible is very clear that we need to teach our children the word of God. Look at what it says in verse number 19. Speaking of them, speaking of the word, speaking of the commandments. When thou sittest in thine house. What do the vast majority of people do when they sit in their house? They sit in their house in their chair and with the remote control. They sit in their house so while the kids watch TV or mom, mom and dad's watching in another room. And they did a, they did a questionnaire on a game show that said, said uh, 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 one out of ten how, or, 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 how many, or one out of seven, how many days a week do your, does your family stay home and watch TV? And over 80, 80 to 90 percent, seven days a week. That's all they do is watch TV. They go to school, they go to work, they come home, they watch, watch TV. Most families do not sit around and talk about the Word of God. Most families do not read the Word of God together. Most families do not pray together. Most, most dads and moms do not teach their children to pray accordingly and scripturally. They do the now I lay me down to sleep kind of thing. They don't teach them to pray to a heavenly father. They don't teach them to pray to their heavenly creator. And they don't read the Bible together to teach them what thus saith the Lord. He says to speak of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way. Sometimes people get so angry with me because that's all we'll talk about is the Bible. We'll talk, I have to, I have to just about when I get around people, I have to put a piece of tape over my mouth because something about scripture is going to come out and it's usually going to start a fight. But we're to sit, we're, we're to talk about them when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. We need to let our mouths be used to proclaim the word of God. What is the Great Commission? Look to Matthew 28. What's, what is the Great Commission? What did the Lord instruct us to do? Matthew chapter number 28. He instructed us as believers. And this is a, 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 this is a great verse of scripture because I think we miss out on it whenever we say, well, we're, we don't have to keep the commandments anymore. Matthew 28, 19. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Is that not keeping the commandments? Do the commandments? Who was Jesus? Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah. He was God in the flesh. Right. And so therefore, if he was God in the flesh, then it was him speaking to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 11. 
And the Lord was speaking. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we see the Lord sitting there after He's resurrected, before He's ascended, and He says, Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then you go back to Deuteronomy 11 and you say, When thou liest down, when thou risest up. We need to let our mouths be used to proclaim the Word of God instead of proclaiming the, the newest the newest uh, video game or the newest TV ad. Or, and now the thing going on on Facebook now is on all the new Star Wars stuff and the Star Trek stuff. And now the new Cars movie's coming out this summer. It's all about that. It's all about different things. We're losing our churches. We're losing our people. We're losing our families because we're not teaching them the whole Word of God. We're teaching them, oh, how I love Jesus, but we don't, we're not teaching them who Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, really is. Yeshua Messiah is God in the flesh. We're not teaching them who he is and what he expects. Then there's a fourth thing. Not only should we let our hearts be filled with the word of God and we let our eyes be fixed on the word of God and we let our mouths be used to proclaim the word of God. But look at verse number 20. Deuteronomy 11. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates. We need to let our hands be busy carrying out the Word of God. If we don't do the Word of God, then we've not fulfilled the Word of God. If we do not do the commandments of the Lord and walk in His ways, then we have not put our hands to the plow, so to speak. Many times people don't want to put their hands to work because their hands will get dirty. Or they may be responsible for something. Well, I don't want to touch that. I may be responsible. But the Bible has already made us responsible that if we are born again believers, if we are followers of Yeshua Messiah, and we're followers of, of the Word of God, we're already responsible to put our hands to the plow and use our hands to carry out the Word of God. He says to write them, and you do that with your hand, write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates. That's an action. That's an action. You take action with your hand. You put your hands to work using, uh, keeping the Word of God in your heart, your eyes fixed upon the Lord and the Word of God, and your mouth used to proclaim its pages and proclaim its commandments. That your days may be multiplied. How many of you want to live long lives? Oh, I do. I want to live a long time. I know when the Lord comes and sets up his kingdom, I'm going to be living a long time. I won't live a long time. That your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. If we truly want the blessings of the Lord, and we truly want to have the blessings that the Lord has promised for us and has set aside for us. And we want our, our family to be blessed and our home to be blessed and the things that we touch to be blessed. We want our businesses to be blessed and we want our efforts to be blessed. We want our obedience to be blessed. Then we must be obedient right. by following the Word of God. We must be obedient by following the Word of God. Let me share just a few extra verses for you to sort of consider. We talk about these all the time, but I just want to share them with you. Yeshua said in John chapter number 14 and verse number 15, he says there in the Word of God, he says, If you love me, keep my commandments. He also goes on to say in verse number 21, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. You say, preacher, uh, we're, that's all you're talking about is keeping the commandments. The Lord is reminding them every single minute. Every single minute. Let me ask you, how often do you forget things? <laughs> I'm starting to have old brains. I'm starting to forget things on, on, on a more continual basis. I used to didn't have to write things down, Brother Daniel. Now I've got to write things down. I used to didn't have to keep a calendar because I could keep everything. Now I've got three calendars going just so I can make sure to get everything done, okay? 
The Lord knew that we were frail. The Lord knew that we were weak. The Lord knew that we were fleshly. The Lord knew that we were going to forget these things. That's why he keeps reminding us. We need to be reminded on a daily basis. What is your job? What is your job? Your job may not be to preach. Your job may not be to pastor. Your job may not be to deacon. Your job may not be to be a builder. Your job may not be a teacher. Your job may not be to be uh, in governments or in any type of authority. All your job is to do is to show up and to be here. But your job is to be obedient to the law and the commandments of the Lord. That's our, that's our job. Everybody's job is the same job. And then everything else spreads out from there. But the first order and the first order of business and the first line of defense is obedience to the Word of God. Let our hearts be filled with the Word of God. Let our eyes be fixed on the Word of God. Let our mouths be used to proclaim the Word of God. And let our hands be put to work bringing out and bringing forth the Word of God. My prayer for you is that you will find a place of repentance and examine your heart and examine yourself and say, Lord, have I fixed my heart upon your word? Lord, has it become a delight to me? Do I meditate on it day and night? Do I consider it and do I think about it during the day? Are my eyes fixed upon your word, which keeps me fixed upon you? Lord, is my, is my mouth being used to proclaim your word or is it being used to proclaim the, the things of the world? Are my hands being used for your glory and for your honor? Or are they being used for worldly things? Something we need to consider. Something we need to ask. Something we need to pray about. Let's bow our heads for prayer tonight. We're going to close with a word of prayer. We're going to ask our musicians to come. We're just going to get a song. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want you to to begin to ponder in your heart and ask yourself this question or these questions. Lord, is my heart fixed on your word? Do I have a desire for your law and for your commandments? Lord, are my eyes fixed upon your word? Do I seek to make them the apple of my eye? Lord, is my mouth being used to proclaim your word? Am I making disciples? Am I going out and reaching the lost? Teaching them to observe what sort of things you've commanded? And Lord, are my hands being busy carrying out the word of God? Or are they being used for my own benefit and for my own glory? Father in heaven, we ask you that you would help us, Lord, during this time. Help us to be sensitive to your word. Help us, Lord, I pray. Lord, that you would bring us to a place of repentance. Forgive us of our sin. Forgive us of our failure. That you may be glorified. That you may be honored. Lord, I ask you, Lord, help us, Lord, that our hearts be filled with your word. Lord, that we have a desire to do your will. Lord, may our eyes be fixed upon your word that your law becomes the apple of our eye. Lord, I pray may our mouths be used to proclaim the gospel of, of the good news. The same gospel that was presented in the wilderness. The same gospel that was presented in Jericho. The same gospel that was presented in the prophets. The same gospel that was presented in with the Lord Yeshua Messiah, the same gospel that the apostles wrote about. And then, Lord, I pray, may our hands be busy carrying out the word of God. Lord, that we would be put to use and be used for your glory. I pray we not be shelved. I pray, Lord, we not be set upon a shelf and the door closed and never to be used again. Lord, help us to be usable. Forgive us of our failure and forgive us, Lord, where we've gone wrong. We ask you that you would meet with us in great power. Send the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. What song are we going to sing? 62. Page number 62 in your hymn book. Please stand, if, if you will, with your hymn book open. Thank you.
change the time for the anniversary. The January 29th will be our church's anniversary for our uh, reorganization, seven years. And uh, we will be uh, uh, having the meeting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Uh, there will be no Sunday morning at 10. We'll meet at 4 o'clock. We'll, uh, we'll have supper. We'll have uh, preaching, singing, fellowship, a good time in the Lord on January the 29th. And then, of course, our missions, uh, whole week of missions conference begins on February the 6th on Monday night. So I think that's all the announcements. Is there anything else that we need to mention? Sunday morning may be canceled, okay? So depending upon the weather, we may not have Bible study Sunday morning, okay? And so uh, depending on whether the ice comes in, let me just say, if you look out the door and you see ice on the road, don't come in. Just that simple. But I'll probably call and uh, and text you and let everybody know anyway. Put a put a notice on Facebook or or an email or something. So, but uh, be careful, please be careful this weekend. Make sure that you've got everything that you need. Uh, and uh, if the uh, it is a possibility, they are saying with a uh, half an inch to an inch of ice, it's very very possible, very likely that we we may lose power. Uh, I would suggest maybe filling up a tub full of water so you can at least flush the toilet. You know, whenever you need to. And uh, if you don't have wood stove or if you don't have gas, uh, 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 gas in your house and everything that want electricity like I am, God help us. Amen. <laughs> so uh, it, it, anybody else got anything they'd like to add? All hearts clear? You'd like to come tonight? Say amen. Amen. Let's be dismissed in a word of prayer and uh, we'll let you go. Father, we love you. Thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for your son who died on the cross to forgive us of our sin and Lord to pay our sin debt. Lord, to be the blood sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for that. We ask you that you would dismiss us with your blessings. Give us a great Shabbat, a great uh, Sabbath uh, as we rest and reflect upon you and prepare for the work week ahead. Lord, I know there's a, there's a storm coming. Some are already being affected down in the panhandle of Oklahoma. We ask you that you keep folks safe on, on the road, keep our folks safe, and then, Lord, most of all, may you be glorified and honored. We love you. Thank you and praise you for it. It is the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Messiah. Our Lord Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands, fellowship one with another. You are dismissed to go cut us off, Brother Mark.